Yeah, MTK uh, Global started off in August at the Emirates Arena. It's a great show, some great fights. Um, and it looks, uh, the Scottish boxing is just looking, going up and up at the minute. So, and obviously to have this show from the next, from the last show, we move on. We've got a British title fight, we've got a WBC title, international title fight, and you've got a great 50 50 between Tyrone McKenna and Lewis Benson. Uh, obviously, you've got the Reese McFadden making his professional debut, Jack Turner making his professional debut, former Commonwealth champion and uh, David Brophy and ABA champion um, Alex Dickinson. Also, we've got Callum McCauley making his obviously fourth fight, is it? Fifth? Sixth. Sixth. Oh, <laughs> sorry, wrong, yeah. I said a couple this morning. <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's a great show and it just shows you the, obviously the step up we've gone from August straight into now. So it's exciting times for Scottish boxing. With that sort of undoubtedly bright future for Scottish boxing, just tell us a bit about obviously the, the gym we're in here and, and the role that MTK hope to play in it longer term as well. I think MTK Global are going to play a massive role in Scottish boxing. Um, we're in, obviously in the MTK Global gym today, some a great gym, we've got some great fighters with Paddy Barnes, Sean McComb training out of there. It's only going to bring McCann. fresh, <laughs> oh Tyrone McKenna obviously, <laughs> <laughs> only going to bring um, fresh, fresh, uh, fresh talent through and it's going to be obviously, we've, we've got a British title fight on, on this show and then obviously we're going to keep gaining experience and obviously putting on better shows and look hopefully putting on world title fights in Scotland so it's, it's a great future for Scottish boxing with MTK Global. Talking about some of those young talents we've got on the end there already mentioned uh, I'll probably make another couple of mistakes about his record now but I believe he's a two-time Scottish champion and, and a British champion as an, as an amateur that's Callum McCauley. Callum uh, this is going to be quite different to what you're used to with all the Box Nation cameras etc. What's your overriding emotion going to be when you get in there on Friday? Yeah, it's obviously good having the exposure, it's going to be on IFL TV obviously as well and obviously Box Nation so it's a good reach for me to get myself out there and hopefully make a big statement on Friday night. And tell us a bit about your your situation because you're quite unusual in that you're still in education, is that right? Yeah, I am. So I'm in fourth year at uni as well so I've got my dissertation and stuff this year, I'm doing electrical engineering so balancing that as well so it's like having two full time jobs but I get it done so it's good to keep me focused and I manage my time work, training and studying so. Fantastic. Have you got some of the students coming down to cheer you on? Yeah, uh, I, I, they'll be there on Friday. Let's hope they're not too shocked at the drink uh -huh. price and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's great. Um, and what, what do you see being one of the sort of leading lights like, coming through the amateur? What do you see the future of Scottish boxing? There's some, there's some great young talent. You've got Reese down the other end, who presumably you know from amateur days as well. What, what do you see as, as the future of Scottish boxing? Obviously, Josh Taylor's sort of the peak of Scottish boxing now, but I feel with your, yourselves obviously coming on board, having the big shows, getting TV back involved, I think that's obviously a big part of it. And you've obviously got Kenneth kind of Boxing and St Andrews who I'm with. Obviously, everyone's starting to starting to definitely get the ball rolling. It's starting to become bigger. Uh, I feel. Thanks very much, Ken. Uh, as mentioned, we're now going to go across to to Reece, who's a, a two-time Commonwealth bronze medalist, uh, once in, in this city. Reece, you, the Emirates Arena is somewhere you've had some success in the past. Uh, must feel like a bit of a, a home home tie for you on your opening. Ah, uh, definitely it is. Um, the Emirates Arena is really good to box in. Some atmosphere and all that as well. You know what I mean? So I'm really looking forward to being in there again. Is there a, I remember when you signed there was a bit of a hoo-ha and, and people said what a great talent is, is going to come through to the profession game. Do you feel any pressure? No, I, I just, as I said, it's just another day at the office. I love boxing. It's just, I love to be a part of it. I just, uh, it's pure enjoyment when I'm in that ring. So I'm just I'm really looking forward to it, man. Can't wait to get in there. With, with the, the bright lights and the sort of exposure and the cameras, the flashing lights uh, that are currently blinding you as we speak, is, is, is it something you felt you were always destined to do or is it a surprise to you? Do you have to pinch yourself? No, as, as I say, this, I get almost every boxer that gets nervous in that, but um, I'm very good at turning it into a good positive comment, uh, confidence in that as well, do you know what I mean? So, as I said, I just kind of made to get in there and just shine. Like we mentioned, uh, perhaps not pressure, but uh, certainly you're relishing the, the attention and the exposure. When it comes to your timeline of where you want to be, do you set yourself incremental targets? So do you say maybe in my first year I want to win X or, or Y? Just take one fight at a time and just see where we can go for there. Um, but um, you just every boxer wants to be the best at the weight division and, and then step up and be the best at that weight division and just see how far you can go. So.
And a word from yourself on, on the impact of shows like this coming to Scotland, the, the Box Nation cameras and MTK Global starting to put on bigger shows with titles on the line. Yeah, uh, definitely. Box, boxing in Scotland and that is abs for Scotland is jumping and now, absolutely flying, so it's only going to get better. Great stuff, thanks Reese. Uh, now we're going to move on to a man who's, who's fought two world champions already in his career and uh, may one day face another. He's got another step up uh, on the night, David Brophy. David, same arena as last time, a good stoppage win against the tough guy last time um, and another tough opponent in Charles Adamo in front of you Friday night. Yeah, we just got that sorted there, so um, I'm really looking forward to it. I think the last one was a, was a great show to be a part of. Um, this one again, even through the difficult end of the year, the injuries and stuff, it's good to be on this show, it's, it's especially with the, the title fights it's on, it's, it's on that night. Um, got a tough guy in me, but Looking forward to getting a good job done and moving on next year and a bigger and better fight. You one of the seem to be one of the best supported uh, boxers in Scotland. What what can you expect from the atmosphere? You, your people were pretty loud last time. Is it going to be even better this time? Yeah, I've got another army coming as well. Um, <laughs> so it's, I, don't, I don't even know half of them probably. I don't. I, I always say I've always kind of got the three or four mates. So I don't know where they come from. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, they're not around me coming, I've always good support, so I'm looking forward to that and um, I'll be able to hear them in the night anyway. You've, uh, as we mentioned, you've been in with, with some top talent, George Groves, Rocky Fielding. How quickly do you want to get back to title fights, perhaps not on the world level to start with, but, but I, I know the British title is a big target of yours. Yeah, the British title, I feel as if I've got a British title on me and it, it would mean a lot to me that British title. Um, as I said after the last fight, we need to be realistic a wee bit. Um, in the world level, you know, I mean, we were, we were in the top 10 world ranked at one point, but I think we're a wee bit away for that, so we're just building ourselves back up, as I say, keep yourself baby steps, getting these fights. Next year, we're at about 2019, we're talking to Danny and uh, Lee and all yourselves, so um, just get, get Friday night, get a good performance on Friday night, um, enjoy my Christmas, rest up a few injuries, and hit the, hit the ground running in 2019. When you see the, the youngsters like Cal and Reese, we've already heard from, um, you're still young in your career, but these guys are really snapping at your heels. Does it inspire you that bit more to know there's, there's such a wealth of talent coming through behind you? I think Scotland itself, at one point it was kind of flat with the boxing. You know? I mean, even though when Ricky was, Ricky was fighting, it was only Ricky, you know what I mean? It was everything else that was happening below him, but nobody really paying attention. So now I think we've got, we've got different angles, you know, different fighters coming through everywhere. We've got Reese, the Commonwealth, Commonwealth bronze medalist. Um, we've got the British titles in Scotland now, so it's, it is, it's thriving, so it's good to be a part of it. I want to be at the top of that, you know. I mean, you want know, everybody wants to be the pinnacle of Scottish boxing. So if, if you don't, I've only got that at your back, I'm not. So, um, so I, it's, it's a good place to be now in Scotland. You, you spoke uh, just last year on us. You spoke about big 2019 in prospect. Is there any any names particularly on your hit list for next year? There's a few names. Um, probably, I think Danny said about four or five calls. You want to punch me in the face recently? So, um, <laughs> I just want to say one of the faces. But um, luckily, you got three or four mates to take well, those guys. Well, they can't fight either. <laughs> but, um, no, I'm not going to call it empty, but. I've, I've got the utmost uh, confidence in my team, you know what I mean, in MTK, so they always have done brilliant for me so far, they've got everything I've, I've possibly asked for or more, so um, I'll have my, my trust in them and they'll give me the right fights at the right time and um, I'm looking forward to it. Fantastic, thanks David. Um, we're going to move now to uh, an unbeaten young fighter who's fighting for a WBC World Ranking Belt, uh, the International Silver Super Welterweight title, uh, Kieran Smith. Um, Kieran, great to have you here. It's an opponent who stepped in. He's actually someone who you stopped on debut, but lately has, has found some serious form and actually has a higher world ranking than you. So, it, although on paper it might it, it might actually look a lot easier than it is because this guy can fight, can't he? Oh, definitely. Um, it definitely produces power. And all I've heard since this fight we made is this guy's made big progressions. Um, he can punch. He can this. I've been a male man. All he can punch. What? There's one that he didn't forget is I don't think he never looked near. Um, and I think I've not progressed in the last three years. And he's got to be kidding himself now. Do you expect that to play a sort of psychological role? Do you expect him to be a little bit wary of you because of that? I don't know. He's got nothing to lose now because, you know what I mean, he's took this in three weeks' notice. He was already training for another fight. Um, it's pretty much, I think, it's my fight to lose. Um, so I keep on for a goal. Is, it, is there any danger, I know you're a very level-headed guy, so I probably know the answer before I ask the question, but is there any danger that given it to someone you've already 
chinned, as you put it to me. Um, is there a danger of, that you might go in there slightly complacent and looking forward too much? No chance. I gave everyone the same respect as Steps man. I mean, it doesn't matter who else. Um, I've got a job to do and I'll make sure I don't trade him. You, you had been scheduled to face Peter McDonough, who's a fairly unique fighter. Is this guy a slightly, not easier, but a slightly more straightforward challenge when it comes to working out what he's going to do when the bell goes? I don't think so. I think this fight's a hard to fight with Peter McDonough. To be honest with you, this guy's still young, still hungry. He wants to go places. Um, he's got punch power, which Peter McDonough doesn't really possess. Um, he's a true light middleweight. So I think that's a hard to test, to be honest. And when you, when you think about your timeline, you've been hotly tipped for a while now and a nice rangy puncher, people are expecting big things of you, certainly this, this will propel you onto the, into a world ranking with, with maybe the number one governing body. What, what's your timeline in your head when you, when you envision it? I mean, is it next Christmas you perhaps want to fight for, for, for a domestic title or is it just world, world um, rankings all the way? I would, well, I'd love to fight for a domestic title for <coughs> Christmas, but that's up to MTK, I leave all that side of stuff. To MTK, I just do my job and fight, um, and I know they'll guide me in the right path, the right time, so. Good stuff. And uh, another big night for Scottish boxing, you're involved in the first one of our shows here, and, and again brought some decent support. What sort of atmosphere are we expecting this time, given that it's, it's, it's pretty close to selling out and that, that arena can be pretty loud? I think this, um, I think it's got to be quite a hostile atmosphere on Friday night. Um, a lot of tickets have been sold for this one, as you said, um, it's on August 24th. That was really MTK just warming up in Scotland. I think this show's going to like, really prepare Scottish boxing. Brilliant stuff. Thanks very much, Gary. Um, so we look forward to seeing you hopefully take a significant step there towards world level. Um, huge night in prospect. One of the main attractions is, is this lovely belt set, to me, set next to me and uh, this lovely guy, Cash Farouk. So we're going to go to the headline act now and hear first from the champion. <coughs> Cash, you're defending a British bantamweight title, hometown. TV cameras, lots of fans. I guess this is why you took up boxing in the first place, nights like this. I definitely, these are nights you know, I mean, you work hard for. And, you know, this is, this is the first thing I wanted when I'm, you know, I'm in professional and you know, I'm here. What, what has this belt meant to you? It looks so sort of old and so prestigious. What, where do you keep it? To start? No, I keep it right beside my bed, so you know, so no one comes and takes it. <laughs> Good stuff. And, and there is someone trying to take it from you right now. What, what sort of challenge do you think awaits you in Ian Butcher? What, what do you know about? I know you sparred before. What, what, what do you think he does well, and what do you think are perhaps the weaknesses you can exploit? I think obviously I've sparred him and he's got experience over me, you know, definitely. But I think at this stage I'm hungry, I'm determined, and I'm dedicated to my craft, and you know, I'm ready to go do a job. There's there's quite a lot of respect between you two, yeah. to be fair to say. No, definitely, and Bush is a good opponent for me in this stage of my career, and I'm definitely looking on to fight, you know. Given given that you seem to actually quite like each other, and you've had a, a relationship in the uh, well, relationship. You've Punch each other in the face. <laughs> uh, yeah, better than my one. Um, is it more difficult to go in there and sort of psych yourself up for, for, for trying to hurt him, or, or is it simply as soon as the bell goes, it's just all business? You know, as soon as the bell goes, all business, you know, I mean, you want to get the win end of the day, you know, you don't want to go home empty handed. So uh, it's all business when the bell goes. And you, you both seem like very respectful characters, although Ian may be about to go absolutely crazy. <laughs> um, but different fighters seem to fight for different things in their lives, some for, for money, some for, for the belts like this, mm -hmm. some just for pride, some because they find someone that they can't stand and they build up a big rivalry. What, what, what makes you tick as a fighter? I am just winning and obviously again, it's good for myself and my family. I mean, that's my main aim in boxing. And the belts are extra bonuses for me. So uh, these are the main things. You know. And how far do you believe you can go beyond this belt, or is this this you've only got space on no, the, think, the side table for that? I think every fight you just take out a fight at a time and you know I mean and just hope for the best, you know I mean. So that's all that's all I aim for, a fight at a time and see how far I can go. Thanks very much, Cash, that's great. Ian, he seems to have a lot of respect for you. Is that is that mutual or are you about to stab him in the back? <laughs> no, no, I've got uh, loads of respect for Cash. Um, as I say we're sparred, he's a nice a nice laddie, he doesn't speak out of tongue, but um, like he says it's just business. This is what we're in boxing for, to win bells like that, the Commonwealth and, and other titles like that. So it's just, just business once we're in there, but um, without outside the, inside the sparring and, and fighting each other, he's a nice laddie and as I say, he just gets some of his business the same as myself. So. Um, with those sparring sessions, he's obviously already conceded that you perhaps 
uh, have the advantage of superior experience. Do you, have you seen weaknesses in, in his technical side and, and things that perhaps you've developed through experience that he hasn't got yet that you can exploit on the night? Um, yep, definitely. Um, I think it was clear to see in the spars of his weaknesses there on, um, on, on his side, but just being an experience, um, I could clearly exploit them. And I believe um, just maturity might have a part to play in the fight as well. Um, I've, I've been around a bit more longer than him, I'm a bit more inside of the game than him. Um, so I'm looking forward to the fight then. Yeah, so the old man him out of it? It's just youth and, and, and experience kind of thing. It's one of the fights that clash and that's, that side of things. But it's one that I'm looking forward to and as, a, as I say, you're unboxing for these type of fights. You, you bringing Motherwell with you, have they any chance of out singing the Glaswegian choir? And they're going to be a rowdy crowd there, I can tell you that. <laughs> 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 yeah, I believe We've already spoken about the Scottish boxing riding a wave. Um, I've asked every other fighter about it. How important is it for you to become a, a sort of one of the figureheads of that? Um, it's important just in myself to do it, rather for Scottish boxing and myself it's good for me to do it. Um, and for Scottish boxing it'll be, it'll be brilliant, it just means I'm more there more chance of TV staying in Scotland and, and big events like this. This is only the second event that since um, Box Nations come up, it's, it's a massive event. It's trying to sell tickets is unreal. It's, it's, they're like gold dust. It's, it's massive. So Scottish Box is obviously on up. Fantastic. So just lastly, I'd like to ask you the same sort of nature of question we just asked Cash about. What drags you out of bed in the morning for those, for those horrible cold runs? Nights like this. Like that. On Friday night, it's, it's, that's where all the hard work and dedication is. You don't go to your bed and just go through them. I'm not a money orientated guy, so I don't do it for money. I work, so I'm looking forward to getting in there and the ring walk and in there under the pressure and, and thriving in there on the night. Brilliant stuff. Thanks very much, Ian. Um, so, a fantastic headline act for the prestigious British title awaits us. Um, from the great respect between Cash and Ian, we're, we're going to the other end of the spectrum. A bit of a grudge match that's developed. <laughs> <laughs> Tyrone McKenna and Lewis Benson. Uh, I'm sure we all know both suffered their maiden defeats last time out and both believe, despite that, they'll ultimately end up on the world stage. Um, plenty to say about each other. Um, I've barely stopped typing since I started talking <laughs> to them. I know they're itching to say some more, so we'll start off with the home fighter, Lewis. Lewis, much has been said about a famous, increasingly famous sparring session that took place between the two of you. He said he battered you, you, yeah, said, you said he didn't even touch you, so what really happened? <laughs> what I said, um, it was a good spar. No, it wasn't a good spar, it was very one-sided to be honest. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. And um, then we pushed on McComan, and that was a hard spar. Like, yeah, where he dropped it. He, he, he dropped it. He dropped it. He did. That's right. He did. Are you joking me? Let, he is the Lunar Terror, he doesn't even have to be Oh my god. It's a hard man to come on. That's a lie. It's a lie, Paddy. We'll stick to Taro for now. McCoy may jump in and uh, disrupt the head to head at some point. <laughs> <laughs> but what actually happened between you and Tyro and Junet as well? Because you've got such different viewpoints of it. There must be some way you can compromise in the middle. I don't know what he's talking about with the spot. He's saying he bought him, he wasn't out of second gear. That's absolute lies. Completely, everyone that was there was his team, so they're all going to stick up for him. As well as it. Tori, does his account jog your memory at all? Who gives a fuck about a spawn? Who really cares about spawn? Oh, this is this out of the window. Bring first things first. And entertainment. And entertainer. Lewis Benson's boxing stage is just like his personality. It's fucking boring. <laughs> no one is spending a hard earned case to go watch someone run around the ring for 10 rounds. To come to watch me batter Lewis Benson. No chance. You're the away fighter. <laughs> yeah. On paper. I won't feel like it. But you've got quite a connection with Glasgow. You train here. Train here. For what what sort of reception are you expecting on the night? Because you said early, early on in this quite lengthy war of words that you're going to. You're going to have even his mates cheering for you. Yeah, so that what look, I've been in Glasgow for the last two or three years. I've got a big, big crowd coming from Belfast. Um, I've always had good support. I am a fan's dream. I go in for a bit. I could, I could stand off, 
Six foot one, so what? Stand off, be awkward, be born. But that's not me. I give the fans what they want, and that's why they support me. And I believe on the night, I'm going to have more support than them. And you, you, I guess most people expect you to come forward and try and make it very physical and, and high octane. Yeah. Lewis, do you simply believe that that'll play into your hands and you've got too much skill to sort of, to sort of be troubled by that and you'll simply keep him on the end of a jab? Well, far too much skill for him. Far too much. Where do you get that, that confidence from? What, what is it that you see in him and maybe you see in yourself that, that's so different in terms of the skill? Um, I just believe I'm a better boxer than him. And I believe if he tried to box me, he'd get out of box as well. So I don't know how he's going to win this fight. So he can prove me wrong if he can. Is that fair? Do you think a chess match is more up his street? Back foot, front foot, war, boxing, I could do every single one down. I have no worries. I'm faster, stronger, fitter, sharper, <laughs> smarter. Everything you want to say, I'm better at. And he's going to find that out. I have played women's bar, I have not went out of second gear, and that's a fact. You know a fact that I haven't went out of second gear with you because I haven't even felt like it. I got told, the Phil Sutcliffe was pulled out, Jack Harrell's in there, and I'm like, why am I sparring with this bass? And he's not even saying, so I'm not going to make Jack Harrell. Fuck it, I'll just do the rounds, mess about, done the rounds, mess about, won comfortably. You weren't beating um, Jack Harrell when we were sparring. What? You weren't beating Jack Carroll. Well, I was, I knew, I knew for weeks. You mean that? You think it just popped out one day to your face and Jack Harrell? No. And you, you told weeks. me, I was in the gym, you told me when the... I think I'm going to tell you everything fucking that goes on the come. No. <laughs> Ignite me. <laughs> Imagine. But he's saying he's going to be the main man in there, not only in terms of the physical battle, but also with the crowd. His, his popularity, and he's a popular fighter, is that something you've got to be wary of? Not at all. Just, it's me and him in there. Anyone can say what they want, but only me and him. As we merry men can say what they want. We Paddy Barnes over there, we can give him it for a week, so I'm going to prove you wrong on fighting him, 100%. Lastly, uh, we'll start with you, Lewis. After this fight, you've obviously had a lot to say about each other. I'm saying obviously too much. Um, will there be a handshake and respect? 100%. For me, anyway. Do I mean? Well, respect for the Great stuff. Thank you very much, gentlemen.